Well, thank you, and it has been a delight to be with you today. And um, it's always good to be in church. We serve a good God, and uh, we are a blessed people. So if you have your Bibles tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at two different passages. One is John chapter 11. Uh, We're going to read one verse there, and then we're going to flip over to Revelation chapter 8. And we're going to read a few verses in Revelation chapter 8. So let's start uh, by reading in John chapter 11, uh, verse number 3. And it says this, Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Context of the passage is Lazarus is sick, about to die. And we jump in there in verse 3. His sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, whom thou lovest is sick. And then if we could flip over to Revelation chapter 8. We'll start reading with verse number 1. It says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, assembled up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Uh, If you would, let's bow our heads together and have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you. Again, for your many blessings that you shower upon us each and every day. We thank you for this uh, opportunity to look together into your word. We would humbly ask that uh, you would open your word to us. Uh, We are come uh, to hear from you. And we are come to uh, want to grow. We want to be your disciples. We want to follow Christ. And Father, as uh, as you speak to us tonight... Through your word, we pray that we would not be hearers only, but to be doers of your word, that we may truly be the salt and light, your ambassadors, to those uh, in our sphere of influence. Uh, Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to think of someone. His name is not important. Their looks do not matter. The gender really is of no concern. Their title is irrelevant. He's important not because of who he is, but because of what he did. He went to Jesus on behalf of a friend. His friend was sick. Jesus could help. Someone needed to go to Jesus, so someone went. If you look again at John eleven three, 3, it says, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Who did the sister send? It doesn't say. All we know was that it was someone. The sister sent someone to Jesus. Others cared for the sick man in other ways. Some brought food. Others provided treatment. And still others comforted the family. Each role was crucial and important. Each role was helpful. But none was more vital than the one who went to Jesus. He went because he was asked to go. 
and earnest appeal came from the family of the afflicted. We need someone who will tell Jesus that our brother is sick. We need someone to ask him to come. Will you go? That question came from the two sisters. They would have gone themselves, but they couldn't leave their brother's bedside. They needed someone to go for them. Not just anyone, for not just anyone could. Some were too busy. Others didn't know the way. Some fatigued too quickly. Others were inexperienced on the path. Not just everyone could go. And not just everyone would go. This was no small request the sisters were making. They needed a diligent ambassador, someone who knew how to find Jesus, someone who wouldn't get distracted from the mission, one who wouldn't quit mid-journey. The sisters knew a trustworthy person, and to that person they went. They entrusted their needs to someone, and that someone took those needs to Jesus Christ. Someone carried the request. Someone walked the trail. Someone went to Jesus on behalf of Lazarus. And because someone went, Jesus responded. How important was this person in the healing of Lazarus? How essential was his role? Some might say that it was no big deal. Didn't Jesus know everything? Uh, he knew Lazarus was sick. Maybe that is true. But notice that Jesus didn't respond to the need until someone came to him with the message. John eleven four 4 says, When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. See, when was Lazarus healed? It was after someone made the request. Would Jesus have responded if the messenger had not spoken? Perhaps, but we have no guarantee. We do, however, have this example. The power of God was triggered by... What do we call it when we ask someone to go to Jesus on our behalf? What do we call that? Intercessory prayer. The power of God was triggered by prayer. Jesus looked right down that tomb. He stared death in the face and he called Lazarus back to life. All because someone prayed. We have read also this evening from the book of Revelation. If you'll turn over there and look at that passage again. Revelation chapter 8. I want you to notice that in Revelation chapter 8, this is the same John who wrote the book of John. This is the same John who had years earlier had witnessed the resurrection of Lazarus. It's the same person who wrote John, and he's now writing Revelation. And now we could look at this passage in this book at what John saw, but I want, to note, I want you to notice tonight what he heard. See, it all starts in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. It says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, I can imagine a voice, and I can imagine a trumpet. 
but to imagine a silver-toned trumpet voice. And so we are welcome to the world of Revelation. For eight chapters, we read about the noises of heaven that John hears. The angels speak. Thunder booms. The living creatures chant, holy, holy, holy. The elders fall down and give worship. The souls of the martyrs cry out, how long? The earth quakes. The stars fall like leaves in the fall. The air is full of sounds. Earthquakes, trumpets, proclamations, and declarations. From the first word of the angel, there is constant activity and nonstop noise until Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now we are jumping in at the seventh seal. The first six seals revealed how God acts. This one reveals how he listens. See, every song ceased. Every being of the heavenly city hushed. The noise stopped. A sudden stillness fell like a curtain. Why? Why did the lamb lift his voice, lift his hand for silence? Why did the silver trumpet voices hush? It's because someone was praying. Heaven paused, and heaven pauses to hear the prayers of someone. A mother for her child, a pastor for a church, a doctor for the diseased, a believer for his friend. When we pray, God hears. Isn't that amazing? When we pray, God hears. He silences heaven so he won't miss a word. God hears your prayers. The Gospel of John didn't even give us who went to Jesus on behalf. We just know someone went. He didn't give us the name. But we know that God responded because someone went. You and I, we live in a loud world. Lots of noise. To get someone's attention is no easy task. That person must be willing to set aside everything to listen. They have to turn down the radio, turn away from the TV, put the cell phone down, turn the corner of the page, set down the book, when someone is willing to silence everything so he or she can hear us clearly, it is a privilege. It's a rare privilege. So let's not forget John's message to us. You can talk to God because God listens. Amen. See, your voice matters in heaven. 
He takes you very seriously. No need to fear that you will be ignored. Even if you stammer or stumble, even if what you have to say impresses no one else, it impresses God. And He listens. He listens to the painful plea of the elderly in the rest home. He listens to the gruff confession of the death row inmate. When the alcohol begs, alcoholic begs for mercy. When the spouse seeks guidance. When the businessman steps off the street into the chapel. God listens. See, you are someone in God's kingdom. You have access to the very throne room of God. Amen. Your prayers move God to change the world. You may not understand the mystery of prayer. You don't need to. But this much is clear. Actions in heaven begins when someone prays on earth. I don't know how many times in my own life a situation arises and I, I feel totally helpless. Like, man, I just I can't do anything. I cannot do anything about that. And in that moment, I am forgetting. I'm forgetting I can do something because I can take that situation or that person, I can take them to Jesus through prayer. In our world, there are many who need someone to go to Christ on their behalf. I thought many times, you know, there are many people in our world who have no one praying for them. Think about that. I grew up in a world where my, my grandparents were Christians, my parents were Christians. I, I grew up with, I know there were people praying for me. But there are people in this world where there is probably nobody praying for them. There are many who need someone to go to Christ on their behalf. No, they may not ask you or send you to Christ, but they desperately need someone to go to Christ for their soul. Some won't go. They're too busy with other things. Some can't go. They have unconfessed sin or bitterness that is blocking their way. Others tend to stop mid-journey. They become discouraged or fatigued. It's too much work, they say. But really, it's not work. It's war. It's war. Still others get distracted, but the need is still there. Who do you know? that needs you to go to Christ on their behalf. Who do you know? How many had a name or names? Just When you think of that question, how many have somebody pop in your mind right now? The question is, will you go? Will you be that someone. I want to close tonight with prayer. It's exciting to hear that y'all having prayer meet every morning at eight o'clock. Praise the Lord. God's house is a house of prayer. We could do we could we could I think we could survive if the church prayed a little more. I think we could. But I'd like to close tonight with whoever came to your mind. I would like to close tonight with, I don't know if it'd be all right if 
everyone who has somebody in mind, maybe we could come forward and just close with a congregational prayer. You bring those to Jesus, and I bring the ones in my mind to Jesus. And let's, not just tonight, but let's continue to go to Jesus on their behalf until God acts in their lives. Let's not get fatigued, not get discouraged, but let's be faithful. All who will, could we, could we gather in and um, let's close with a, with a word of prayer, bringing those to Jesus. And know this, that when we pray, silence is in heaven because God is listening. God is listening.